Hey guys, I um, want to show you a new environment device for Logic that I've created here, which I'm calling Insert FX Glitcher. And it's kind of similar to Stutter by Isotope or The Finger by Native Instruments, um, in that you have playable glitching type FX from a MIDI keyboard or any type of physical MIDI controller. And the nice thing is, is that it will allow me to use any plugin that I want as my source for the FX. And that means all the Logic stock plugins and any third party plugins I have, uh, which is really nice because that doesn't cost me any extra money. All right, so here's a little demo. I'm going to start with a simple drum loop and I'll let that play for a bit. And then I'll start the glitching effects here with the keyboard. So if you've seen my tape delay beat repeat video that I did, um, this environment device works basically in the same way. Um, you can control the parameters of an audio channel strip with a MIDI controller. So normally we would use our MIDI controller to play sounds from a synth or sampler and record them into Logic. Um, in this case, I'm using um, note on and note off messages to turn the power on and off of the insert effects of my channel strip. So when I press a key on my keyboard, which is a note on message, it is turning the power of that insert effects on. And when I lift my finger off the, the keyboard um, note, then it's sending a note off message, which bypasses that FX. So this is the uh, insert FX glitcher uh, device object in the MIDI environment. And it's in the form of what Logic calls a macro. And that's just a kind of a neat little package of all the modular objects and cables and whatnot. So if I double click on it, it's going to show all the guts of it. And just wanted to make the point again that this isn't an audio plugin. This is a MIDI plugin or MIDI device that um, can receive information from anywhere, really, inside of Logic or outside of Logic, any kind of MIDI information. And it receives that MIDI information, and it can reroute it to anywhere again, within Logic or outside of Logic. It reroutes it, and it can transform that information and reinterpret it so that, in this case, the channel strip receives that information and it gets it in a different form um, to turn on and off the plugins. So it's a really cool thing. All right, so to connect all the routings in Logic to get this to work, I'm going to do it in a slightly different way than I did with the tape delay beat repeat video. Um, just to show you that there's more than one way to do it, and I think this is maybe the easier way. So, All right, so I have the FX Glitcher device somewhere in the environment. It doesn't matter where it is. It just needs to be in some layer. And you need to make sure that uh, in the inspector for that device, um, that assignable is selected. So to open up the inspector, it's key command I. All right, so I have a few tracks here for demo purposes, an audio track, a drum loop, and a software instrument synth thing that I want to be able to glitch using this uh, device. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, press plus here and create a new track, and I'm going to select external MIDI. Then I'm going to right-click or control-click on the channel strip in the main window, and under reassign track, I'm going to select insert effects glitcher, here in the devices layer. So now this channel strip actually is the insert effects glitcher. So you can kind of see it like a MIDI instrument, uh, which in reality it is very similar to. And lastly, to set up this routing, I'm going to go back to the MIDI environment, um, to the layer that the device is on, 
and I'm going to cable the insert effects glitcher to my audio track. So I have this set up for 12 insert effects uh, being switched on and off from MIDI note C to B, which is an octave. So we all know 12 notes in an octave. So each of these notes will turn on and off the FX inserts in succession, starting with C turning on and off the first plugin, C sharp turning on and off the second plugin, and so on and so forth, all the way up the octave to B, um, which is the 12th plugin in the chain. All right, so this box here assigns which octave of the keyboard, or any MIDI controller for that matter, um, to use for the triggering. So these two boxes set up the range top and bottom on the MIDI keyboard for the insert effects. So right now I have it set up for full range using all 12 notes on the keyboard from C to B, um, which correspond to channel strip insert slots 1 to 12. But let's just say I wanted to have plugins at the top or bottom of this chain to always be on. So there's a few different reasons why you'd want to do this. Um, so for example, um, let's keep the ring shifter on here at the top and the pedal board on at the back end. So what I would do is set the range then from C sharp to A sharp. And the last box here for channel strip type, you just want to either select audio aux or software instrument, depending on which one you're going to be doing the glitching on. So just like recording audio or MIDI into Logic, you're going to want to set your latency as low as your computer can handle so that you get the most immediate response from this. So when I hit a note on my keyboard, it's very quickly or immediately turning on and off that channel strip effects. So I have my audio buffer set right now at 128 samples, and that works pretty well. You can also record your MIDI note information right onto the MIDI track for the insert effects glitcher. All right, so I'm going to stop talking for now, and I'm going to start messing around with this, and hopefully it'll show you a little bit of how it can be used in your projects. Um, any questions that you might have, please see the... Uh, tape delay beat repeat video that I did earlier. Go check that out because I explained maybe some of this a little bit better in that video. And that environment object is set up pretty much exactly to how this one's set up.